Hi, this is the first in the series of what I call In a Nutshell, which is going deep into nutrition and deep into the different labs. I'm a data-driven lab guy. We do different labs and they're there for a reason. It's not because I just enjoy it. I think it's necessary and in the ideal world, this is what we all should be doing. But these are just little nugget topics that I think are the most actionable piece of information you can have right now to think about and then act on, okay? So we're gonna talk about what has happened in the last 100 years to our nutrition and our individual bio-individuality and why that actually is something you need to look at. We can't all be doing the same thing. And so let's say we all did the Mediterranean diet, 100 of us, we'd have 100 different outcomes, or the vegan diet, or a carnivore diet, or anything else out there. Some of those diets are exactly right for some people, and they're exactly wrong for other people. I used to think that we could all do the same thing, but it didn't work out. So you started going deeper. And the answer is basically getting your own data. So let's talk about it. So what's happened in the last 100 years? I want to tell you that our nutrition has changed severely. You know this, I know this, this is probably Nutrition 101. So 100 years ago, the issue, whether you were thinking for yourself or your family, was just get enough to eat. Bring home enough so you could put it on the table and in the icebox, pre-refrigerator, remember, even pre-icebox for the most part, on the table so we had enough calories. And in that calories, we assumed the nutrition was there. But now fast forward to today, 2022, we really are a cactus in a rainforest. And what I mean is that that idea of just going out and getting enough food to come home and eat, well, anybody can have enough calories to eat regardless. But what you're not gonna get enough of is nutrition to consume on a daily basis. Not only are you not gonna get that because of processed foods, of course, is the answer, but also how we graze them and so on and so forth. So depending what level you wanna look at, it's all become far, far worse in terms of nutrition. So now it's an individual responsibility to look at the nutrition of the food that you're eating and to look at your genetic predisposition. We're gonna talk about that and it's really important and this is what I do, but it's what you should do for yourself. And the links for all these things I talk about are in the description, but this is what we have to do. We are a cactus in the rainforest in the sense that, let's take that example, really harsh environment, a plant not only grows, but it can flourish. There's hardly any water, and yet it's a juicy plant. It has nutrients that it's managed to develop a system to extract it from such a harsh environment. You put it in an environment in which it's just abundant with water, for one, and nutrients, what does it do? It dies. So too are humans that way. In the South, New Mexico and Arizona, there's Native Americans that are called Pima Indians. And also the same tribe exists in Mexico. And here's the difference. The ones in New Mexico and Arizona, the United States, they have access to all sorts of processed foods. So calories are not an issue, but they are a cactus, almost literally, but in a human sense, they were a cactus that got brought into the rainforest in the sense that their whole metabolism was about conserving energy, right? Not burning energy, conserving energy, conserving nutrients. So then they go and they have all this processed foods and what happens? They have the highest rates of obesity, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, of diabetes, et cetera, of Alzheimer's, of dementia, of neurological conditions, of autoimmune conditions. It's just flourishing for these people that 100 years ago didn't have much but thrived. You give them plenty and they're dying. You go to Mexico now where they don't have the same access to processed foods. It's changing, of course. They don't have all those incidents of obesity, diabetes, autoimmune, et cetera, et cetera. Far, far fewer. That's just a dietary difference. So the cactus in the rainforest is what we've become. And we have to be, we have to exercise knowledge. We have to exercise some data, not like phenomenal amounts of data, but just some data about ourselves as saying, you know, we, I need more of this. I need more of that. So what I want to tell you about is that the food has changed. It's become nutrient poor and calorie rich. So we can all have all the calories we want, but it's also become addictive. I call that the Dorito syndrome. Everybody likes Doritos, unless you've been trained not to like them. And if you've been trained not to like them, then I 
want to meet your parents. <laughs> Whoever trained you not to like them, they're pretty smart people. But most people love Doritos, totally devoid of nutrition, rich of calories, and that's the, they're emblematic of where we are today. That's the kind of food that everybody wants to eat. They're stressed, so they have stress food. This is the rationalization. But no, that's not the case, actually. And carbs are very addictive, and you can go down that avenue, and all that's true. But they've been also added with other additives and preservatives and so on and so forth that are engineered to be addictive. So it wasn't that the carbs are addictive, but there's part of that, or the sugar, the sweets they put in there, but it's all been engineered to have more. Don't worry, we'll get you more, right? You just can't eat one, you bet you can't eat just one. So there's that, that's our norm today. But the problem is, is that we are all actually starving for the most part because the nutrients, the nutrition and the food has become lower and lower. So we're calorie rich, but nutrient poor. So it's a kind of disguised starvation. So in that starvation, in that starvation of nutrients, those people, and there are populations that are much more vulnerable, much more susceptible to certain drops in nutrition, and they will start having a lot of problems. So they are a much more vulnerable population. And these are people that have certain genomic mutations, which you can find, you know, 23andMe and so on and so forth. There are other companies, plenty of companies do this now. It's no longer a secret. Um, it hasn't been a secret for the last 20 years, but it's become more and more affordable to get this information for yourself. Ideally, your doctor should know about this, but if they don't, you should do it on yourself. It's just the life you have to live right now. So now you find out that if you have some of these mutations or not, and the mutations are, some are big players, that if you have that, that's a problem and you need to address it. But they can be addressed, that's the point. They can be addressed. I don't mean with medication. They can be addressed in your awareness of saying, I need more of this stuff. You either make better decisions for the whole food sources of foods you're going to have, or you supplement it. And supplements are the secondary choice, not the primary. Okay? Not everything's a supplement but they are helpful and they've changed as well. So these different areas, I call them kind of ecosystems because it's not just one um, mutation. It's usually degrees of mutation of that one gene, for instance, and then other genes in the area that have to do with other enzymes. So we call them ecosystems and you collectively look at the different mutations that have to do with kind of one operation and then another operation. And then you go, all right, what's the overall assessment? We have a problem here or do we not have a problem here? Problem here in the environment of much or far fewer, much less nutrition than we had a hundred years ago. It's the dropping of the nutrition that has made the problem for these particular populations. So it's made us have to know what are these individual problems that we have. So these individual problems are genetic and they can be found out. It's not that esoteric, it's not that specialized. It's within your backyard, you can go do this. Um, and they usually come down to an area called methylation, which is turning genes on and off. You can sort of see generally how that'd be important. I'm not gonna go into that, but it usually comes down to folate and B12 and making sure you have the right forms of those, right? It used to be in food, folate used to be in food. And the other is about choline. Now, the problem about with choline is we've been talked out of having eggs as a culture, right? Oh, eggs, don't have eggs, eggs are bad. They're, they'll get you high in cholesterol, in cholesterol. Well, actually, egg yolks are the highest source of choline. Real important choline, by the way. Real important, certainly for pregnant moms and the fetus that they're growing, but also for young kids going through puberty where these are major changes. And then even just as adults, you need to have this choline. Think of acetylcholine at neurotransmitters, but it's actually far bigger than that. Not just about that. So you have choline, folate, and B12. That's the big three. You can start to get a little more refined after that. And yes, everything's necessary, B vitamins and so on, and essential fatty acids. But you need to have the information about those three things. If you have those three things down, that will be a big weight off your shoulder. And you can start formulating what you need to do. It's not that sophisticated, but you're going to be a little more aware of what's the diet going to be like? You know, what do I need? Gosh, I need more folate and B12. You be methyl folate and methyl B12. And you go, oh, it's a supplement. I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, if you take that and too much of that, that's going to start making another problem. So you need to look at the context. You need to look at the, the holism. Again, make it be a, a data-driven decision-making 
on your half. Not, not massive spreadsheets, but some, as you've probably seen me talk about before. So those are the highlights. We now need to know about, you know, how much we need ballpark and having enough of these nutrients. So it's now incumbent upon us. It's required by us and ideally of your doctor, or whoever your health practitioner is to know about this as well. So I hope you do look into it. And it is just so important to look at these things. And it's not that difficult. It's not beyond you. It's really what you need to do. And it's because the world has changed. If we go back and live like those Pima Indians in Southern New Mexico and Arizona, like they did a hundred years ago, even though it's very hard to live in the hot, hot Sonoran desert and so on and so forth, yet they did and they had a culture and they thrived. Don't know if they were happy or not, but they had their culture and it worked for them. They don't have that culture anymore. They have a lot of disease. They are a cactus in the rainforest. Till next time. Hi, I just want to add, if this is something you're interested in going, what are the causes of dementia, Alzheimer's, cognitive impairment, mild cognitive impairment? We're going to have a number of videos coming up that I'll keep you posted on. Absolutely fascinating, whether you're thinking for yourself or you're thinking for your parents or you're thinking for friends that would receive your advice in a positive way, you might be interested in this particular video.